not big. So between March 2nd and now, over 20 days, I have not received any phone call, any email to express his concern about the workers, about the community, and about how we can move forward. And this is wrong. Shame on you, Alex Chu. Shame. Shame on you, Jonathan Chu. So we ask for all of your support and your continued support in fighting for justice, not only for Jingfong, but for the Lower East Side and Chinatown community. Thank you for being out here today. So this is a brief translation. Uh, I've been a dim sum seller in Jinfeng uh, for more than 24 years. The true family has taken profit share from the Jinfeng business all these years. During the COVID pandemic, all the businesses in Chinatown have been affected. But the true family is trying to use the rent issue to close the dining room, making the 180 workers losing their job. They're accelerating the decimation of Chinatown. We ask all the people across the board in the community to stand together against the true family's destruction of our community. Thank you. Yeah. And here I want to recognize our, our community support, uh, including Don Ling, um, who might not be able to make it today, uh, but he has been talking with us, talking with the workers, and uh, he's the one who has trying to put together a team to take over the restaurant operation. And from what he indicates, the true family returned his call and say that, well, you're not really good at, at, making, at doing a restaurant. Well, but if the true family really, really want to continue this, this place as a community, as the center of the community and a restaurant, he will have to do everything he can, like what he said on this quote, to make the restaurant open, including working with Don Lee, with, including working with the colleagues, including working with the restaurant workers union to keep this place open. But that's not what he's doing. Mm. It's a shame. It's a lie. It's a sell out of the community, right? Yeah. yeah. So next we have some supporters uh, coming to speak. Uh, we're going to have Tiffany from DSA, who has been DSA has been a strong supporter and has been part of the anti-displacement fight to protect Chinatown and the Lower East Side. day uh, of celebration we celebrated here at Jing Fong when the Bowery tenants won their victory against their landlords and were let back into the apartments after being wrongfully evicted we gathered to celebrate at Jing Fong in the face of everything that the Asian American community has faced since the pandemic began it seems incomprehensible that the shoes who present themselves as patrons of Chinatown would close such an important institution to our community, which has borne the brunt of economic hardship wrought by the coronavirus. I used to work three blocks away from here and would walk to work every day. And as early as January 2020, I noticed that businesses, restaurants, and shops along my route, one by one, begin to close. Since then, we have had to suffer from being scapegoated and brutalized by racial violence, as well as sexual violence, as demonstrated by the recent attacks in Atlanta. We must fight back on all fronts. In addition to standing up against these attacks, we must stand up against the economic violence brought upon us. This is why I'm here today as a member of the Democratic Socialists of America, because we stand in solidarity with you, because we must fight for our hard-won union job. And an injury to one is an injury to all. Yeah. We must protect our workers and make sure that they have a good source of income to support their families and make sure they can stay in this community past this pandemic. We might fight for this
we don't have the workers or the restaurants for them to work in, there will be no Chinatown left after this is all over. So, the coalition to protect Chinatown in the Lower East Side, we have called for a boycott of all the true business, including the 50 Bowery Hotel, the East Bank, and last but not least, the Museum of Chinese in America. We have also heard that many artists have stood in solidarity with the workers. Those members of the former Gazino Collective, they pull out their show, which is very great for them. And we want to see more of that. So here I want to recognize, want to recognize their bravery, want to recognize their acts, their action to stand in solidarity with the workers. Let's give them a round of applause.
to make a point specifically about how this is specifically attacking Asian workers. There's two instances that have happened recently that show that this isn't just something for older Asian workers, but younger ones and workers as well. There were two instances I want to bring up to the forefront. In December of last year, in Philadelphia, 19-year-old Christian Hall, a young Asian teen with mental health issues, was killed by the police, shot seven times. That same month, a 30-year-old, Angela Kinto, a Navy veteran, was killed as well by cops in San Francisco. You want to know how they killed him? They kneeled on his neck and killed him by that. Does that sound familiar to any of you guys here? George Floyd? The same racism that's attacking us is attacking Asian workers. And I just want to make one final point for you I want to ramble on. That... Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. The point I want to make is that we're hearing this slogan of stop Asian hate. And we need to do that, but get a look at who is saying this. You have people, businesses, that are adopting this as a slogan right now. Conflict Magazine. All these big companies right now that claim that well, we're on the bandwagon to stop Asian hate. This is true? Then tell me one thing. Why is it that your companies, more than likely many of your companies are using slave labor that uses not just black workers, but Asian workers as well, workers of all colors, exploiting them for profit. This is just a slogan to them. Or is it a slogan? Or are you serious about it? If you're serious about it, why aren't you here right now? Yes. You want to stop Asian hate? The same way you stop black hate, white hate, Latin hate. You come together as one. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so uh, we have the next speaker, uh, Don Lee, who have been trying very hard to put together a new offer to continue the restaurant. Let's welcome Don Lee. Hi everyone. Um, thank you too. I just want to give a quick update of what transpired since our last um, event. So, as you know, when Jin Farm was announced the closure, I was encouraged by the statements that were made by the property owner of how much they support the community, how much they support Jin Farm. So we pulled together a team of folks who I introduced in person last at the last uh, meeting. Um, and we really believe, we were encouraged at the time of the desire of the property owner to support Chinatown. We still believe it can happen, and it should happen. Um, I did receive an email from them last week saying that based on the current um, operator that they don't want to work with another restaurant partner, and I think that's a mistake. Um, so what we are saying to them, and I wrote them back and said that, you know, we email you, I call you, left messages, and we only get responses after our last event. I was hoping for good news. Um, I'll, say, I'll urge the property owner to work with all of us here to find a path forward, one that makes sense. And it makes sense for everyone because one of the things that was said was they were, Chin Fong was a profit-making business before the pandemic. So the only reason why they were closed was because of the pandemic. And now that we're at the point of recovery, it's unfortunate that people don't see it the same way. So I really urge the property owner to work with us and even give us idea. If you don't think what we propose works, let's, t let, let's work together to make it work. Because this, this is not just for the workers here. You know, I wait at tables, I cook my way, that's how I want to get my tuition. So I know what life is like with these guys. I know what life is, you know, like for, for a lot of folks in Chinatown. But this is beyond that. This is the recovery effort of, of New York City. It's a landmark of New York City. And as I said to the property owner, this is also for them, right? We are gonna make sure that we will pay the rent that have not been paid, right? So we can figure this one out. Government have announced, and I also wanna share with all of you that we have received very strong positive feedback from just all walks of life, from government, of government uh, folks, 
to just ordinary people on the street. Some even call and says, you know, we can we pay for some of the some of the events so that when it reopens, we can do that. So the support has been universal from everyone. So I am um, I stand in solidarity with all everyone here. Our only interest is to how do we support New York City? How do we support Chinatown? How do we support families? And it really would be a shame if the virus beat us this way. This is, should not be the way it would go down. Jin Fong and a lot of the restaurants in Chinatown are all business, all profitable before the pandemic. And if the federal government, the state, and all levels they need to support us, let's make it happen. Let's keep the, you know, let this, let's just do that. So I really hope that the property owner will reconsider. Um, you know, I noticed that they did not say anything about the plan being un unrealistic. Um, and if there are, in fact, concerns, it's okay. Let's work together to figure it out. I think we as a community can make that happen. China's not being ignored for hundreds of, more than 150 years. The proximity of Chinatown to City Hall will tell you the history of Chinatown. If we can survive that much, working together, we can definitely survive and recover from this pandemic. So I really hope that the property owner will work with us to reconsider the decision. And I think together we will have a much brighter future for not just Chinatown, but for New York City. So thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you, Don.